Okay, welcome back, everyone, to another special episode of Yoda's Hut. I'm Bill. I go by Yoda Man on the Boards. And once again, I'm joined for commentary on this game by Derek. Hey, Derek, how's it going? Doing all right. All right, so we've got another match from uh, the Nova U.S. Star Wars LCG Championships. Uh, in this game, on the left, we have Colby Bernardo, um, one of the New York City Metas, and uh, I believe he's playing his light side deck in this game against uh, Brad Iyer, who's on the right, who I'm pretty sure goes by uh, Yeezus on the boards there. And he is playing Navy in this uh, game. So let me run down the decks real quick. So Colby on the left, he's got Rebel Alliance for his affiliation, the regular Rebel one. He's got two Hoth Operations, uh, one Blue Squadron support. Then he's got uh, seven Jedi Pods. He's got two Heroes Resolve, two Secret of Shantipole, two Heroes Beginning, and one Heroes Trial. And uh, Brad is playing a pretty standard Mono Navy deck. He's got two Tarkin Doctrine, two Might of the Empire, two Enforced Loyalty, two Endor Entrapment, one Entrenched Defense, and also one Defending the Trench. So he has got Pilot Vader in there, uh, probably for I Have You Now, and just some extra pips there. Mm -hmm. And it looks like uh, Brad's got some like German uh, <laughs> flag uh, <laughs> um, card sleeves there. <laughs> it's kind of neat. <laughs> and we'll see what yeah, they get that's... started with here. So some pretty interesting decks, to, you know, at least on uh, on Colby's side. That's you know going with speeders basically. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's always dangerous against Tarkin though with his uh, blanking pilots and uh, moment of triumph. You yep. you can lose your board really quickly if he's on the table or if that gets played. Yeah. Interesting so. uh, play map that uh, Brad has there, too. And now I can't see what he flipped up. I see a mite. Yeah, uh, I can't make out anything but the mite. And we'll see in a second. There's a Hero is Beginning and Secret of Shantipole and Hoth Operations, it looks like, for uh, for Colby on the left here. So he, yeah, he's he, checking Hoth Ops. He hasn't seen it in a while, either. <laughs> yeah, so he did bury uh, or put three cards under Hero is Beginning for Edge Battles. I saw a Tarkin Doctrine real quick when he put his hand over it, and I oh. didn't see what the third objective was. I blinked. I didn't even see that. It's probably in Force <laughs> Loyalty. Yeah, probably a standard start here. Well, we'll see how quick a, a start light side can get here, because he's got all kinds of edge stuff there between yeah. Heroes Beginning and Hoth Ops. Um I mean, he, he could if he plays something like you know Rogue Rogue Three on turn one and gives it a pilot. This could be a very quick game. Yeah. So we've got a uh, fleet staging area there. Let's see. Uh, I still couldn't see what that other one was. And there's Chimera. So. And looks like uh, Brad's just going to commit Chimera to the Force and take balance there. Was it the middle one that you saw? That middle was one is Tarkin Doctrine. Yeah. Okay. And so the top one, I just keep, the, the, keep an eye on the top just one getting the glare his, there. His hand flies over yeah. it and blanks out the sun for a moment. Yep. And it looks like Colby discarded some. There's a tauntaun. <laughs> ah, Wrath of the tauntauns. <laughs> I think it was a. Uh, and there is uh, a blue nine. That's a pretty good unit to start off with. Although Chimera could take it out. Yeah, so, Chimera is such a good unit. Yeah, so uh, B Colby doesn't have any seeds in his deck, so he's kind of stuck here. He's just gonna. He's uh, just. Oh, he just he just flipped the balance back. They must have forgot to flip the token. Oh. And I think yeah. that is enforced loyalty because he just pointed to it and he put a damage on here as beginning. Okay. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. All right, so Dial's going to uh, go up to three here. Yeah, anytime you know you're playing against you learn and fist, you got to be careful about attacking when you can't finish off an objective. Right, because it'll come back to bite you still. Yeah, and especially given the fact that Enforced Loyalty has been nerfed now to where it only hits for one damage, it's not as big of a threat. There's a mouse right, and that Tauntaun's going to uh, focus to keep him from drawing. It's got Tauntaun <laughs> written all over it. Yeah, it sure does. All right, so Brad's still got five resources here. Actually, he's got six with Might. Mm -hmm. since he did not have to double focus at first turn those fleet staging areas are just so good for the resource ramp mm -hmm. 
he had rule by fear in his hand. That might not be a w- awful play at, against speeders. I was just thinking the same <laughs> like, thing. I thought I saw rule by fear in his hand, right as you said it. Yeah, he's now I can see the guns. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> he is playing rule by fear. And uh, what was that? Uh, I missed that. <laughs> two, whatever it was. Yeah, maybe it's Mythel. Yeah, it might that, be Mythel. That would be really good against speeders too. Yeah. Stormtrooper assault team could be pretty good too. <laughs> if it was a stormtrooper, I might have attacked. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of blue nine. Uh, Mythel makes more sense. Yeah. Then apologize for getting the glare here again. Let's get. I want to give a shout out to uh, Nate Tripp, catch us all on the boards. He has recorded these games for us and and offered to let us, uh, Derek and I here at Yoda's you know, Hut, bring you commentary from Nova from the U.S. Championship. So. It's exciting mm-hmm. to be a part of it since we weren't there in person. There's a temple hangar, the pilot one, re- reduction. Mm-hmm. And what's he got now? And two for a speeder bike. That's not bad. And uh, I think that speeder bike just got goes. bounced and might get played again. Yep. It and still prevents him from playing something else, though, because it eats resources. And he just Which put, pilot was that? Uh, was that Wedge, I think. Because uh, he has to have wedge in his deck. Yeah, no wedge is in Hothops. Oh, that's they, right. Yeah, oh, that's right. He has Hothops wedge. Yeah, because yeah, he paid one. Wedge, that might be wedge. That wedge on blue nine is absolutely brutal. Yeah, it is. Because you can, I think you can end up swinging like three times with him. Yeah. All right, so he's going in with the speeder bike and blue nine. That's interesting. Oh, he gets an edge bonus from because. Uh, uh, the speeder bike and uh, Hoth 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 also, so he's got edge two right now. Yeah, that's not bad. And so he's theoretically could lock down both his units, and then Blue Nine can just have a field day. Yeah. This is actually really yeah, that is Mythel there. Okay. Yeah, he he's got to win this edge battle. I don't know how he does it with Heroes Beginning over there plus edge two. Yeah. It's probably going to be hard for Brad to win this one. I think he had four cards left, maybe. Let's see. So there's... Oh, he kind of conceded that edge battle there. Yeah, Got out a bunch of cards. He wasn't going to win it. Yeah. So I think he focused both of them. Yep. The funny thing is Blue 9 has only one unit damage. Right, but doesn't Wedge... Or what's wet? Wedge just lets you refocus, right? So he's only if he sings three times. Yeah, I mean, I think you almost have to take it out here, don't you? Oh, he's leaving it on. That's a little risky. So after the engagement, I guess he's gonna blow up something. Yeah, so. well, that's Mythel's removing uh, icons from Blue. Oh, Nine, that's true. Remember? That's true. So now he's going to get to double swing at something else because Blue Nine, right. when he swings, you freeze up Wedge, and then Wedge go, makes him go again. So right. that's how he does it a third time. So he's so going he to... Com- yeah, he he tickled the first one, locked down both guys, and then obliterated Tarkin Doctrine. Yeah. So he blew that up. Well, I'm just thinking there, then that might be one too many damage on Might because doesn't he prevent... He should have prevented the one Black Blast on... Blue nine. Yeah, I think they got one extra on yeah. right there. And then uh, he triggered and forced to put a second damage on Heroes Beginning, but he's locked down. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brad might be losing, I mean, sorry, not Brad, uh, Colby might be losing those cards in a second. <laughs> Unless he's got a trick to free up one of his units to use them. But, and there's now, a Blue Nine is not elite, is it? Uh, Blue Nine's elite. Is it? Yeah. Yes, so the problem with Blue Nine and Wedge on there, you're just not going to free, you're not going to lock that thing down. Right. He needs to get rid of it, and there's not a super easy way to do it. He really needs Tarkin right now. Yeah. To be able to blank and get rid of Wedge. Now, if he's got Fist or Yularen coming, that damage is going to go back, and it might actually make a difference if there's two on there instead of one. There's yeah, Yularen. There yeah. Yularen. Right. Because you're right, Mythel should have prevented one of the Black Blast. Mm-hmm. And I then, could not see that one. I think that might be the assault team. 
Oh, yeah, if that can get rid of uh, Blue 9, getting rid of the speeder wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, yeah. it is the assault team. Yeah, yeah. you definitely got to get rid of Blue 9. Yeah. It was a, I didn't see what else he lost. It was a speeder. Uh, the yeah. snow speeder was under there, which is not too great. Right. And I didn't see what the other card was. Dial's up to six now, by the way. It went to five on Brad's turn. So. Mm-hmm. And the Stormtrooper Assault team doing some work. If I'm him, I send in uh, Mythal and I put a second one on that speeder bike. Yeah, that seems like a, a wise thing to do. Because it's got a built-in Edge 2 with Hoth Ops up right. there. Now, granted, if he plays another speeder, he's going to get Edge from that, but that's not as scary as the uh, two tactics from the speeder bike. So, yeah. So he's going yeah. after Hoth Ops and he's going to... Put... Well, he did that with Ularin, though. He, oh, yeah, he, he didn't send Mythyl. He didn't lock it down. He did not. He left left it out. There's another Heroes Beginning when uh, Colby flips up. Uh, he better pray that he doesn't get anything big out there now because he's going to have Edge 2 again and again three Edge cards buried down there. Yeah. I'm a little uh, surprised he didn't lock down the speeder bike, but... Yeah, I definitely would have. Uh, give, especially that you have Chimera back for defense. I might have even kept you Lauren around. Yeah. Uh, and not attacked with him. Yeah, because if you put blocker. right, and you put him in the way, you don't really care if he dies because you just want to play the other one. Yeah. So. Well, that the trade off to that is you don't get the two damage on Hothop, so you might be hoping to get rid of here in the next turn. Right. Because he could always send Chimera in to to blow that up. Yeah. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Seems like the camera was freezing for a second, actually. I don't know if you're seeing that, too. I think it's going okay. All right yeah. now, they're both just shuffling. So. Yeah. <laughs> let's see what he plays it's here. Got three for a... Uh, that was another pilot thing. Oh, two for the pilot thing. There's Owen. Three. Oh, that blue leader. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of like the poor man's home one from mm -hmm. the core set. He gets to do an extra one point of damage after yeah. he swings at another objective. And here goes the speeder bike again, trying to lock some stuff down. Yeah. Now he's in the same situation again where he's got to win an edge battle against a bunch of uh, edge. He's got edge two and cards buried. And yep. if he doesn't, they're both locked down, and then uh, blue leader is going to get to damage two objectives. Yeah. but I, um, bet, I bet you one of them will go on enforced loyalty, <laughs> and there'll probably be three on uh, uh, the, uh, I can't even talk now, the bottom one. Yeah. <laughs> All I right. didn't. Uh, I didn't see what came up to replace Tarkin Doctrine. Did you? Uh, I did not either. So there is a right. target. He's going to win and get a target in at the same time. It might have been enforced. Oh, again. it's another enforced. Yeah, I saw yeah. it there when he put his hand over it. So he's going to get to lock down Mythil and Chimera. I would think. Uh, he should. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to let this. Well, oh, he's going to let Mythil live. Or not be locked down. He locked down the Stormtrooper assault team. That was probably a good idea. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about him over there with the glare mm -hmm. on him. So, But now Mythyl's going to get to do... The the trade-off here is even if Mythyl, you know, lessens what the blue leader can do, he can still get that extra one damage and put it on the uh, other enforced loyalty. Right. Right. So he put one in. See if Mythyl's got anything, and then he's got a heat. So he's going to actually get to take out Mythyl there when Blue Leader strikes. Uh, doesn't Mythyl remove? He moves uh, a blast. He doesn't move guns. Oh, is it white and black blast? Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was thinking for some reason it was like a gun and a blast. So he got two damage on both enforced now. That's um, playing with fire, I think. Out of, <laughs> yeah, well. He doesn't really need to attack because he's already blown up one, so and he's going to put Owen on the force, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So Dial is only going to go to seven, but still at seven, if if Pratt draws into enough stuff here, he's well, already he got two, two damage. Yeah. 
He's already got two damage on Hothop, so this could, like, really ruin uh, Colby's day here in this game. Yep. Yeah, like a fist and one more heavy hitter. I got to think Owen's going to be Malstroid fodder this time and leave the, the Tauntaun back. Ooh, he focused the Tauntaun instead. That's kind of surprising. Yeah. I mean, Tauntaun at least has a gun. <laughs> yeah. Although... Even even if you don't have... Owen's got any... two health, so... Yeah. Well, it depends. What are you going to get in, the, in front of? The <laughs> Lauren with Owen, I guess? Oh, yeah. yeah. You certainly don't want to get in front of Chimera. And there's there, the shield guy. Here's the gunship. And spend more resources. Is that another one? I think it was the second one, yeah. <laughs> Shields for days. Yep. Now I think you got to go in with Chimera, take out Hoth Hops, and focus that damn speeder. Yeah. With your shielding guys, you should be able to deal with the blue leader. So he's still got quite a few cards in his hand, it looks like. I'm guessing he has four. And, well, uh, actually, I, oh, the yeah, the stormtrooper's locked down. Who's right. that one he was just touching that uh, he didn't attack with? Yularen, maybe? That's right, that's Yularen. Yeah, see, I think you leave Yularen. Although we haven't seen, like, anything with any real unit damage in his deck. Right. What is that? It looks like he just played oh. double fist. I think he sent in Yularen and... Maybe and just didn't was there was no block. Maybe yeah, that's maybe what that might be what happened. Well, that's interesting because he can't just blow up cloth ops without using the at least one of those fists there. Well, if he yes, yeah, so if if he puts it on hoth ops and then Yularen right. kills it and then the other. Uh, maybe it was a target and a fist. No, I think they were two fists. Yeah, and he's gonna put well, the other ones on. Be able to, then he should be able to win with Chimera. Wherever he puts the other two damage, he sends Chimera and kills it. Yeah, and then Yularen's gonna take out Hothop, so Dal's gonna go up to nine there. Yeah, I don't think unless he's got a trick with Owen here. Yeah, he's, he's only got, got one card in hand. Owen into unfinished business to get a blocker that can live or something, maybe? I don't know. Oh, well, he's gonna... owning into something. Yeah. What's he owning into? I don't know. He's still yeah. got a card, and he's got one card in hand. Yeah, he didn't actually use it. I'm not quite sure what that was, other than he shuffled his cards. Yeah. Well, Owen says the next thing you play is, and necessarily have to play it right, right now. Right, I he just, might be waiting th to see what he does first. Yeah, I thought he'd already declared Chimera as the attacker, which it looks like that's what he's doing yeah. now. So then you play... Yeah, I guess that, I think that's game. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was just bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. So uh, a quick win for Brad there, all things considered. You know, Colby was trying to outrace him with the speeders, but the double Imperial Fist just threw all oh, that yeah, damage back. Yeah, double fist, you Lauren. I yeah, mean, that's, that's... Just six damage coming back at you that you didn't get. Her. There's, it's hard to counter that. Navy's still good. He could have used yeah, like that... a Battle of Hoth there or something to maybe help clear off some of that damage when he wouldn't have been expecting it, but he didn't have that. Yeah, so, well, you can see the... I mean, I, I can see what he's trying to do with his deck, because Wedge has so many good targets to be able to double swing with there, between yeah. Blue Leader, uh, Blue Nine obviously being the biggest <coughs> one, but putting him on the speeder bike and yeah. dropping four focus. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of potential there with uh, that. And then you've got the additional edge boost that you're getting from the Hoth Ops to go uh, with stuff like the uh, the speeder bike, having a built-in two edge is a pretty big deal. Yeah. So it uh, looks like we're going to keep it here kind of like we did in the first round of Swiss and this the second round of Swiss here um, 
keep the camera going. We're just going to go in game two between Colby and Brad here. So they're going to switch sides. Colby's going to be playing dark side, and he is playing the Galactic Enforcers uh, affiliation. That's the Sith Navy one with seven card reserve. Uh, in his deck, he's got two Emperor's Web, two There Is No Conflict, one Council of the Sith, one Lore of the Lost, and then two Might of the Empire, two Endor Entrapment, one Deploy the Fleet, and one Imperial Blockade. And uh, Brad's light side deck is a little all over the place. Looks like we're going to see more vehicles here. He's got a Mercenary Contacts. That's the Smuggler Rebel 7 Reserve. Uh, he's got... Um, Two that bucket of bolts, one raise the stakes, one across the Anoat sector, one daring escape, one breaking the blockade, and then his six rebel pods are two rogue squadron assault, two defense of Yavin 4, <laughs> one called to arms, so he's got desperation in there, and one heroes of the rebellion. So this is <clears throat> going to be a pretty interesting matchup here, I would say. Well, the good thing for him is he doesn't have to worry about Moment of Triumph. No, he sure doesn't. <laughs> there is no Tarkin in Colby's deck. Yeah, and with the uh, the paid outs and the Yavin, I mean, you could theoretically drop a drop his hand and just flood the board with small yeah. units. So. And if he's got Rogue Squadron assault out, that'll help him draw some cards to replace some of that, too. Mm-hmm. It looks like they both mulliganed. Yeah. Equally impressive starting hands, I'm guessing. Yeah. That's the thing with those 7-7 seven, seven split, or the 6-6 uh, six, six splits and the 5-5 five, five splits. You just never know right? You know how, how you're going to be set up in terms of being resource screwed or you know just getting stuff that you don't want to play or that you can't play yet. So, so we'll see what kind of uh, flops they get here. So both have some pretty interesting decks, in my opinion. Yeah, I haven't seen There's No Conflict in a long time. Yeah, let's see. Uh, getting the glare again. I think that's the uh, the untargetable pilots. Yeah, that's Heroes of the, the Rebellion. Yeah. Can't see the other two. I think uh, Colby did get There Is No Conflict, and I think, is that maybe Might of the Empire and Endor Entrapment, I think? Yeah, that's what I was seeing as well. It looks like there's a Sith Library to start. And that, I think that's Vader. That is the Sith Vader. <laughs> yeah, is he? Is the, that the, the fake one? Yeah, the that's the fake one. Vader? Is what I meant. Yeah, the fake yeah, Vader. So every time you play a fake card, you do a damage, basically. Yeah, I think it's limit once per turn, but still, yeah, that's. Yeah. yeah now it's it's not the uh, not where you have to play like the Sith fake card is just any right. fake card but right. then the objective does something for the sith fake card right the objective is when you play a sith fake card you can put a focus token on an, one of your opponent's objectives so you can mm -hmm. help lock their added resources there right i wish we could Did see I... exactly what brad's objectives are i think that the second one it looks like it's probably a rebel thing with the but he needs to like wave his hand over it so we can see what that his objectives are <laughs> I so said maybe somebody is watching on this as we're this saw it real quick before they started, but it went so quick when he flipped them up, I couldn't tell what it was. Uh, we'll figure it out. It looks like he's yeah. counting. I bet one of those things is defense he had for because he's like counting out cards. Yeah. Almost that he's probably trying to figure out what does he want to put in there. Well, the other instead. interesting thing with that Vader too is that you just have to play the fake cards, even if they get twisted away. I think his ability still triggers. Um, I think he's resolved, but the the objective uh, is is revealed. One of them is reveal. Yeah, yeah the objective reveal, I think is what resolved. it is. Yeah, I think it's the I objective can, that's reveal. Maybe you might be right. I can't remember. And there is a sleuth scout for one. And he did I think, discard for one. So yeah. Yeah, unless he played a payout over there that we didn't see. There's a Duro smuggler, a free pilot. <laughs> now I, I don't think if, he played well played. I think he discarded. Yeah, I think you're right. But he must uh, have the fence he had four out. And the question is, what's the other one? <laughs> was he running uh, any of the ones where like you get a benefit just for having a pilot on something? I know there's the ones that give like extra health. Um, uh, was he running that objective? I don't think he No, mentioned. I don't think so. 
he has yeah uh, daring escapes just a two one breaking the breaking the blockades the one I think lets you focus it to do things I think that's called the arms is the top one. Okay. And he discarded and played is that Rogue Six or Rogue Nine I can't tell. I always get the pictures backwards. Uh, it's a X wing of some yeah, it's, kind. It's one of those. <laughs> so I think there's a sleuth Rogue going Rogue. in. Red Six, Rogue Six. Yeah. Oh, Yavin is the middle location. Yeah. I just got and the top that. one, I'm almost saw, sure I saw like the image for a quick second. I'm pretty sure it's called the Arms. Okay, I don't even remember what called Arms is. Um, doesn't it do something like when you you blow up an objective, you get to? Oh no, I I would say I don't remember what the image. Oh was. Oh, oh, I thought you meant you didn't remember what it did. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's. Uh... Well, now that you said that, I'm, I'm drawing a blank See, on it. See, you did that to me last time. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's something <laughs> about when you blow something up with a piloted unit. Yeah, so he got two damage from the Sleuth Scout on There Is No Conflict. But Dow's going to go to three there. Yeah, it's been so long. After they nerfed Desperation what, a couple years ago, mm-hmm. which was so good beforehand, you don't. I don't think you see Cloud Arms nearly as much. You know, occasionally no, somebody I, might do it. I still uh, after a piloted one, vehicle yeah. unit resolves a strike that in, destroys an enemy objective, you destroy a target enemy unit that's committed to the force. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. So if he can blow something up with that piloted sleuth scout, he could get rid of that Vader. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Colby's only going to have four resources to play with here. Uh, but that's a pretty good one. Get the heavy cruiser or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or cruiser. That's the one that brings things into combat. Yeah. Doing that, if you can win edge, you can bring in that one guy and then uh, lock down the sleuth so he can't go again. Yeah, I think that's not a bad play. So I think that ship is Rogue 6, which is when it's piloted, it gets an extra unit damage. And if Wes is piloting it, it gets targeted strike. I think that's the one that is. So he's going to pull it in. I think he just rubble assaulted that. Objective. Oh, okay. So now there's four damage on there. Is no conflict. Yeah, I don't know why he did it right then. Maybe just to get the card out of his hand. Yeah, but it was right before an edge battle. You'd rather keep the cards yeah, in hand. Yeah, so there is ancient rivals in there. So Colby's going to win this edge battle and kill Rogue Six, and he's ancient rivals is going to let there is no conflict trigger and he's going to put an extra focus on called arms so yeah i just saw uh, the picture you read it is called arms yeah and there's a so he's killing the rogue six and he's gonna put a focus Mm -hmm. on the sleuth and i would assume he's gonna do a damage to the sleuth from vader i did to the objective can you do it is it objective or unit you get to uh no, I think he got the damage on the objective from the unopposed. Oh, wait. This oh, Rogue that's Six, right. He maybe was maybe he Rogue was... Six has three health. Hold on. No, it only has two health. Then I'm not sure what happened there. No, yeah. he. It was the unopposed. That's where that one damage came from. Yeah, maybe he didn't trigger Vader's thing because he didn't need to. But it, I don't know why you don't put it on the sleuth anyway. Or is Vader restricted to, like, you can only do it to certain types of units, maybe? Uh, I don't believe so. I didn't think so either. I'd never played Fate Vader much. I probably should have. Just seemed like the other Vaders I, were always better. I did use him for a while. There were a couple decks where he, he was kind of fun with, but it was it was really effective against the Jedi decks with Ancient Rivals. Right, but, right. Um, so now when it's, there's other things being That's played... That's not going to really come into play here. <laughs> yeah. The other, the core Vader that is just more consistent for triggering his damage. Yeah, after a friendly fake card resolves, deal damage to a target enemy unit. So I think he could have done one to the sleuth. Well, unless that was a different. Yeah, unless, unless that, it wasn't the rogue. other rogue. Yeah, the other one does have three health, so maybe. Right. I, I thought it was Rogue Six though. So. I don't remember. I can't. I, there are too many of them for me to keep track yeah. of all the yeah. images with those. Unless you play them regularly, you, you're not, just not going to remember. Yeah. Now, um, Defense of Yavin 4 will at least help him get some stuff out, even though he's lost one of his resources here. Mm. 
The only thing is with that in that scenario is yes, you're doing that, but then you're you you have no cards for edge battles. So you got to right. be playing a deck that doesn't care about winning edge because he's sitting there with Vader to block, and you know Vader's likely to kill whoever he hits, well, especially a, with some low health yeah. units. See, there there's a Cloud City operative. I think you mm. play the Cloud City operative, even though you have to move it onto the Cloud City operative, and now you yeah, swing with the doing. sleuth. And you get rid of Vader thanks to <laughs> yep. called to arms. Yep, that's exactly what he did. And it's worth it here. You're going to overshoot the objective, but it's so worth it. Yep. Yep, and he's going to kill Vader when he strikes with the Slew Scout. So a good play from Brad there. Get rid of that mm-hmm. Vader. And not don't leave any damage on the board, so just in case. <laughs> Although we know he doesn't have you, Lauren, but you see some Navy stuff, you're never sure. <laughs> yeah. So Dial's going to go to five. And what did he just slip up? Um, I think that is uh, Lure of the Lost. Or okay. it's yeah, it might be Lure of the Lost. It's not Web or Council, and it doesn't look no. like there's no conflict again because he looked at it and he would have known what there's no conflict does. So Lore of the Lost lets you uh, focus the objective and get something back from discard into your uh, deck. Yeah, shuffle it into your deck. I like the ability. I just don't like the timing of it because you have to do it after you've refreshed, I think, but before you draw. Yeah, that sounds right? right. That sounds right. So you're you're restricting your amount of resources you've got before you've even seen what you've got in your hand. Right, right. I mean, if you have a bunch of resources, I guess it doesn't matter. But <laughs> right, there's the I love that resource, the Death Star Command Center. Oh yeah, or it's <laughs> yeah. The one where you, when things blow up, you get to take your resource off of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's Palpatine, isn't it? He put, spent six. I'm sure that's Pal. Yeah, that's got to be Palp. Yeah, he was just it was, that's the alt art for a core Palp. That's probably why he looked at it. <laughs> he might not have recognized that. I still get people that do that. (laughs) Is that ready for takeoff? He's going to search for top five cards for pilots and unique pilots and unique uh, rebel vehicles. So you got, Mm -hmm. what do you get, red two and hobby? That's not bad. (laughs) Yeah. All he needs is an X-Wing to go with hobby. Yeah. He does have two of those in his deck. Mm-hmm. Palpatine is going to lock this that board down, though, I would think. <laughs> yeah, we aren't going to see that sleuth scout anytime soon. I wouldn't think so. So he's going after Call to Arms, maybe? Two on the sleuth scout, one on the Cloud City Op. Yep. He yeah, that's how I would have done Three on Call to Arms. I'm not sure you bother committing here, because if he ends up blowing something else up with a piloted unit. Uh, he's already got the force. Yeah. So. I no think you just to. leave that that cruiser back there. But so now, uh, so Brad's gonna have all of his resources plus he's still got defense he had four out. And I, it's one of those things. Once you get hit by Call Darms once, you want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Obviously, <laughs> so. Mm, yeah, it's super aggravating. And he might be want to be a little careful because he's starting to get close to where desperation could potentially come into play. <laughs> Yeah. So well, the other thing too is his objectives start blowing up. That command center is going to free up, and he's going to get a whole bunch of resources right. again. But he doesn't have it yet. Nope. So Brad's blown up one, and uh, Colby's got three damage on Call to Arms and one on that defense he M four there. I'm trying to think if there are any enhancements in his deck that he could put on Palpatine to protect him from Call to Arms. I can't think of anything. No, I can't think oh, of Oh, well, there is the Rav's lightsaber. Oh, yeah, Rav's saber. He could give Palpatine Rav's lightsaber to protect him. Which would give him one gun effectively and nothing else because right. of the rest of it is only useful on Rav. But that anything with an enhancement is immune to desperation. Right. right. So Brad has got quite a few cards since he's got the... Uh, the mercenary contacts affiliation out there give him seven cards. Mm-hmm. Although uh, um, Colby's got quite a few too, because 
He's got. Yeah, he's also got a seven card reserve. Seven yeah. Reserve, so yeah. I think he's still got five cards in hand for an edge battle, mm -hmm. if he needs them. And there is one of the smuggling prayers. Did he? Did he discard or did he play well paid? I think he I think discarded. He discarded. Yeah. He really could use a rogue squadron and X-wing. Smuggling freighter. Not going to do a whole lot right now, I wouldn't think. Now that's the guy that his like blast is not preventable if he's piloted. Is yeah, it, damage like, shell. It doesn't. It goes through shields. Right, it goes through shields if it's piloted. Yeah. Yeah. The unit damage, I think, or is it all damage? Maybe it's all damage. Uh, yeah, no, damage. I think it's, yeah, damage I think... dealt by it. So that would mean the blast damage can't be uh, stopped either. Yeah. So. No, I knew the blast couldn't. I wasn't sure about the unit damage. Yeah, it says damage, so I assume it's both there. He's got a, yep. quite a few fake cards in his hand, too, it almost looks like. So it's going to play discard, and I think he played red, too. Yeah. So now he still has one resource to play with here. Yeah, Astromech, maybe? Yep, he's got an Astromech. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so now that's two guns and potentially two blasts. Right. Did he pitch that hobby? I don't know. So, uh, Colby's only got the one blocker, but if he wins edge, he could probably shoot either ship and then lock the other one down. Mm hmm. Yeah, so he's going in with red two after something. Colby's blocking. Well, I see. I see a target in his hand. If he had sent both, he could have potentially blown up an objective, and then freed up red two. Yeah. I don't know why you don't send both guys then. Although he he's to not likely edge. to win edge. Yeah, he pitched a bunch of cards. There's double ancient rivals. He's got a target and a stay on target. Maybe that's why he pitched hobby. Yeah. So uh, let's see. So. Vader's going to trigger one, or no, Vader's off the board, sorry. I mean, yeah, there, both and there is their conflicts off, so the ancient rivals really aren't going to come into play. No, they do nothing here. Uh, so he is putting Hobby on red two with the stay on target, and he hits the target if opportunity, but I think Hobby's just going to immediately die now. <laughs> Although Hobby will go back to hand, that's true. When red two dies, Hobby comes back to hand at least. Mm -hmm. And he focuses down the smuggling freighter. And Dow's just going to yeah. go up to seven here. See, and that, that's the problem that I was saying, where you you spend all your cards to play things, but then you can't win edge. Right. So if they have any blockers that have focus, you're in trouble. And, of course, you know, Darkseid has a fair amount of that now in all three factions. Yep. So he doesn't have a ton of resources to play with this turn. He's only got four. Uh, there's a control room. Get, yeah, get some so more resources going. Yeah, but next turn he's going to have... Might is going to be back. There is a Berserker Hunter. <laughs> uh, those are good. Yeah. And you could also, you know, uh, if he blows something up, either... This turn or next turn, he's going to have the uh, the command center as well. Yeah. If you blow the something dial, up now, a dial will go to eight, though. <laughs> yeah, I, so he's setting up. If I'm him, I, I want to blow make my big attacks next turn. Yeah. After the dial has gone to eight. and not You don't want to blow anything up right now because then you're in desperation. Right. Range. You want to put damage out there and you want to be able to finish everything off next turn. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe you send Palpatine after Heroes of the Rebellion, lock stuff down. Actually, I would send him uh, to the middle one, because that would put four damage on it, where the uh, the other ship could take it out next turn. Uh, oh, he just blew up called to arms. That might come Yeah, back we'll see if turn. that ends up being if a mistake If he draws desperation, uh, yes. he yeah, I, w I would put it on. I would have done got four damage on Yavin, and then the next turn, you know, it's, you're going to be at eight, and you've got an objective with one health and objective with two health. All right, he put the berserker on the force. 
Right. Now, Palpatine did lock everything down, but... Yeah, no, I still would have attacked with Palp. I just would have hit yeah, the what other... Is that? that was a... I, I couldn't tell if that was Daring Escape or Bucket of Bolts. It was definitely a smuggler one. I did not see it. I think just something's telling me that it's uh, Han's location. Yeah. Just from the faint. I mean, I can't make out the image good at all, but just what little kind of isn't reflected right. just right, I think it is. But There's I wouldn't a, swear. Well, we got a red squadron X wing. Yeah. The problem is he doesn't have enough research. Well, I guess he could play a Rogue Squadron X-Wing for one and then play Desperation, but he wouldn't get a pilot on it, so he'd have to... Well, Hobby, Hobby's free. No, Hobby's one. Is he? I thought he was free. No, he's free if he got the pilot enhancement, but he's he's one as a pilot. I don't think he got Desperation, though. If he had Desperation, he would have probably already played it. <laughs> Just... So I'll see if uh, Brad can find a way to come back from this one. So I see the Rogue Squadron X-Wing, which he can't really kill right now. Looks like it has... Has he got the those torpedoes, I think, in his hand? Is he a Y-Wing? That, that increases the damage by a lot. Yeah. It's well, like doesn't one it inc- per unit attacking right. with it instead. Yeah, the question is, can he get more units out, though? Mm-hmm. And keep them alive when he attacks. Because really, Colby didn't play a lot of cards again. He played the Berserker, he played the Control Room, and I think that was it. So he should be sitting there with five cards in his hand. Yeah. Looks like he's got two Rogue Squadron x That can make it a little more interesting. Mm-hmm. Like I say, because he really can't kill either one of those things. He's pitching a card, playing one of them for one. I think you want to put the, uh, he's got an astromech. I think you'd want to get that out if you can. Well, it's do you play the astromech or do you play the photons? The astromech mm. gives you the unit damage. Yeah. Because if you put that with hobby... Then you've got four guns and four blasts, yeah. theoretically. I'm just looking. He, he actually, you know, besides the well paid, he's got some, you know, he's got a few things with resources. Defense M4 has the resource. Rogue Squadron Assault has the resource. Daring Escape has the pilot resource, but, you know, not a ton of them. And he pitched a card and played another Rogue Squadron X-Wing. There's hand two for Han. That's interesting. So he can attack and keep something out of the engagement. Hmm. But then you got to pitch Han <laughs> to free it up. Yeah. Hmm. If that's Endor Entrapment out, he could actually, you know, save some damage on the cruiser on top of that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it looks like he's past turn. The dial's going to go to 10. So that means that uh, Colby just needs to blow up one thing here. Mm Mm-hmm. And Palpatine and the Berserker. Two guys with three health. Yeah. yeah. If you can win edge, that that would certainly be enough. Yeah. And he's got all those resources now, so he draws like one of the Death Squadron Star Destroyers. That <laughs> is that another cruiser. Yeah. Yeah. See, he should be able to send the two cruisers at a random objective and draw in both X-Wings. And then he's got Hmm. enough to send the other guys at the damaged one. Plus he's got the Gladiator now. 
Yeah. Now he act, um, with Heroes of the Rebellion out. I think he can't pull in the pilot, the X wing that Han's on. Can you not? I thought you you can't target him with any card abilities. Oh, <laughs> he played join me. He took the Cloud City operative. <laughs> I guess just because. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Join me is on any unit, isn't it? Or what does it go on? Uh, join me is any not, non-unique uh, character. Character, okay. Yeah. So there is a Gladiator, Palpatine, <laughs> Berserker, and the uh You got enough cruiser. black. You might as well just send, yeah, send the horde. Right. He should have four black now. He's just got a... And he, well, and he should be able to keep the gladiator alive if he needs to. I think the only thing he'd need to be a little afraid of is a heat to stop like Palpatine actually shooting. And he just it twisted twist. away some cards. That's not bad there. And I guess he got rid of his card, so he's going to swing with Palpatine. He'll do two damage to the objective. I assume you put one on each X-Wing and then one on the Crater. He'll get to strike if he wants to. He can like get rid of uh, Han, and then he's just gonna blow it up and win there, you know, at the Berserker. So he didn't free up Han. So Colby uh, came back in game two, had a nice win there with his dark side. Oh, he had a tractor beam just in case he needed it. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, because if he pitched Han to free the guy up, he would have just focused him again. Right. All right, so uh, so interesting matchup there between Brad and Colby with them each win and one. I'm not sure exactly how many points they would have been on going into the second round. So, um, but some some good game play all around. I think he was hoping for that desperation, but he didn't draw it. <laughs> or Brad yeah, if he'd, have, if he'd have drawn it, it would have pretty much been game. I think uh, maybe not, but uh, it's you know he would have been able to do all kinds of damage. Uh, to at least one more objective, probably. Right. And then, uh, you know, even assuming the next turn, he had, you know, he played the Gladiator and another Cruiser and stuff, but he wouldn't have been able to attack. He wouldn't have had Palpatine. He would have had to play defense. And then the next turn, you know, the Sleuth frees up, and, uh, you know, he probably is able to kill him off. Right, exactly. Uh, it, it was really a matter of can you draw the desperation, and that's the thing. You play in the seven, seven, you know, the seven reserve. You got one in your deck, and you're playing sixty card deck. Your odds are not too good of pulling it when you really need it. Yeah, he did cycle oh. through a lot of his deck, pitching with defense M four, but but still, yeah, that's, but, I still, but you only I still got think, one copy, like you said. Yeah, he probably went through half his deck. Yeah. So, you know, 50% chance of getting it, you know, in the first 60 card or 30 cards or whatever. Right. But uh, still fun to see, to see that match there. You know, good matchup between pretty good players. You know, obviously Colby's, I'm pretty sure, has finished in top 16 before us. Did you I think he's just finished in top 16 or something earlier this year at uh, Gen Con, I think. So uh, certainly good players matched up here at the U.S. Nationals at Nova. Um, so you got any final thoughts before we wrap up the commentary on this match here? No, I mean, both decks pretty much performed like, you know, did what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, the matchup. It, it, when you're playing something like Fighters or whatever, you can't... You have to be able to win without winning edge. Right. And uh, And you have no focus, really. So when you run into something like Palpatine or Tarkin that removes your pilots or, you know, anything with a bunch of focus, it's just really hard to win without pulling off multiple tricks like yeah. desperation or whatnot uh, to get around those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, uh, thanks to, uh, to Brad and Colby for letting Nate record this game. Thanks again to Nate for uh, recording these, uh, the Swiss rounds and other, and basically, Stuff throughout the whole tournament at Nova with the U.S. Nationals there, so we we appreciate that since we're getting to bring you the commentary here from Yoda's Hut, and we'll we'll certainly be back soon with a, another round from uh, Swiss, you know, between probably a couple other players when we move to the next round. And thanks as always for joining me for commentary, Derek. Appreciate it. Yep, anytime. <laughs>